antimatter atoms. They're just like us. What do I mean? Back in 1947, physicists realized that hydrogen atoms have a little more gap between the electron and the proton at their core than they should. Uh, those are the two particles that make up a basic hydrogen atom, and there's a certain distance that nuclear physics suggested they should be away from each other. Turns out the distance was a little bigger, and the reason for that is the quantum vacuum. Makoto Fujiwara, a Canadian particle physicist who worked on this experiment, told me, when you normally think about the vacuum, you think of nothing. However, he said, according to the theory of quantum physics, the vacuum is filled with so-called virtual particles, which are constantly being born and destroyed. In quantum physics, the vacuum isn't empty. It's, it's sort of boiling with particles that appear and disappear, antimatter and matter appearing side by side and canceling each other out. And this creates a slight pressure in the quantum vacuum. And in a hydrogen atom, this makes that pressure makes the electron and the proton a little further apart than they would be otherwise. That was sort of theorized and then first detected in 1947. It was a big deal because it really surprised physicists. In the time since, there's been a lot of research into antimatter, which is literally the opposite of matter. Every basic particle that exists in matter has an antimatter equivalent. So electrons, which are negatively charged particles of matter, have positively charged antimatter twins called positrons, and protons, which are positively charged uh, particles of matter, have antiparticles as well. They're called antiprotons. And an antiproton and a positron, which are both antimatter particles, can actually form a hydrogen atom if you bring them together. And in a lab in Europe called CERN, there's a machine that builds these anti-hydrogen atoms out of antiprotons and positrons. And Antimatter is hard to work with. It, there isn't a lot of it in the universe compared to all the matter we have around us. And if it comes in contact with matter, the matter and the antimatter annihilate. They just disappear, which creates problems if you want to study it. However, in this lab, they figured out how to contain antihydrogen and study it. And what they've been trying to figure out is in what way is antimatter different from regular matter? Is it at all different? You'd think it would be because there's so much matter and so little antimatter, but no one really knows. And so they contained this antihydrogen and they looked for that effect of the quantum vacuum pushing the positron and the antiproton away from each other, just like the electron and the proton in a regular hydrogen atom. The physicists behind this experiment told me that it's a place you might expect to see a difference between matter and antimatter, if only because it's such a subtle effect that requires that if only because it's such a subtle effect that relies on such subtle quantum mechanical differences, uh, but when they looked and shot lasers at this antihydrogen to see what it would do, it turns out that the same quantum vacuum effect that exists in regular hydrogen exists in antihydrogen. So until now, no differences have been found it between antihydrogen and regular hydrogen, except that one of them is made of antimatter. That in some ways only deepens the mystery. If antihydrogen and hydrogen continue to just be exactly the same, except for their matter-antimatter difference, then why is it that our universe filled up with matter and barely has any antimatter to notice or speak of? Physicists are going to keep studying antihydrogen, they told me, in order to try to figure out the answer to that problem.